we bring the Bobbiest Podcasts. Welcome to Beer Bubble! Hey everyone, and welcome back to Beer Bubbles, the number one bubbly podcast in the world, we think. Bubbly, 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 bubbly. Bubbly, 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 bubbly. But I'm here with CC. Hi, CC. Hi, Rasmus. How are you? I'm doing well, especially since we're drinking a Mersen from Nerke Kulturbryggeri here in Sweden. Oh. So, first off, cheers. Cheers. That is oh, gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Mm. It's so gorgeous. Well, Nerke has been around for a while and they know what they're doing. It's good stuff. It is. 6% medicine, classic, malty. Amazing. Good beer. Good beer, yeah. Yes. So why are we here? Why are we here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so a week or two back, we had a staff meeting and CC had a basically a, a one-on-one in beer, how to make beer. A oh, beer school from, from foundation up. Yeah, from foundation up and how, how all the steps from the beginning to the end and for different beers and all of that stuff like that. So we're going to go through that today. And it's going to be a bit nerdy. A little bit, but educational. We we want to, to go through that. How does your product end up in your glass, basically? Yes. That's what we're going to talk about today. Mm? CC, what's the first step in making beer? Except, you know, buying a brewery and all the equipment and <laughs> the boring <laughs> stuff like that. But like, when you have all the th- things set up, what happens next? Now, the thing is, uh, as you know, you have four ingredients in beer. Or, or traditionally, at least. The Reinheitsgebot, right? Oh, well, that, that's the Reinheitsgebot. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an old uh, like foodstuff law from Germany. Uh, and in the beginning, it actually said that it was supposed to have malt, it was supposed to have water, and it was supposed to have hops. Mm. And this is basically because people were drinking themselves to death, spicing beer with stuff that wasn't hops. Ah, different kinds of herbs that could kill you, basically. It's not a smart idea. <laughs> so, and then uh, people found out what yeast was, and that is the fourth ingredient. So you got four ingredients to basic beer. But if you want to learn all about the history of beer, you can check out our two latest episodes with Joel Hedman, where we go through the Swedish beer history, at least, and a lot of other stuff around that. Awesome podcast. Awesome, awesome podcast. podcast. Yule is awesome. Shout out to Yule. Yes. So, but now, like, making beer, what, what, what's the first step? What, what do you do? Well, the, you start with malt. And what is malt? Uh, malt can be any kind of grain that yeah. you actually cheat into believing it is spring. Mm. You put it in water so it starts to grow. Because then you get a buildup of enzymes in the malt kernel. Well, sorry, in the in the in in the malt. So the enzymes is that like what creates the sugar or no? The enzymes are needed later on in the brewing ah. process. We will come to them. All right. But uh, you need the enzymes, and that's why you start germinating the the in ninety five percent out of a hundred. It is barley. You okay. use barley. So we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> when I say barley, think wheat if you want wheat. Think rye if you want rye. Think uh, oats if you want oats, but the process is the same. Okay. So you germinate it, you put it in water, it starts to grow. It starts to think it's spring. So the growth starts to grow out of the kernel and the enzyme starts to build up. But inside the kernel, there's also starch. And starch is downbreakable into sugars. And you don't want to get rid of the starch because the growth out of the kernel actually lives of the starch. And you don't want to get rid of the starch because starch breaks down to sugars. Sugars ferment with yeast and builds alcohol and carbon dioxide. So if that disappears, you're Well, you don't don't get a beer. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So uh, you uh, have to stop this growing process or the germination. And um, you do that by drying the malt. And after the drying, you can also roast the malt to get different Mm. colors. And get different flavors out of the out of the malt. Yeah, so uh, like we we talked about in the last episode, is that in the beginning 
they can only smoke it basically. You had to have a, uh, use a fire, so all the all the barley was kind of smoky. Oh yeah. But nowadays mm-hmm. you use uh, indus- industrial ovens basically. Well, you use hot air. Hot air, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You put the barley in big drums that rolls, and you blow in hot air over them so they dry, and they become delicious. Yeah. <laughs> you had it for breakfast, right? Yeah, well, well, I I normally use malt uh, like pilsen malt, the, the foundation of old lagers. I use it as snacks when I got people coming over. Oh, snacks, right? Yeah, I put it in a pan with some olive oil, some salt, instead of peanuts. It is delicious. If you haven't tried it, try to get your hands on some. They're actually delicious to eat. They really are. The dried malt, that's the base. If you do a lager, you use mainly pilsen malt. If you do ales, you use pale ale malt. Flavor is the same. Bit of a different kind of enzyme compound to, to the malt. Uh, we will come to the enzymes later on. All right. So if you if you st- make an ale, you have pils- uh, you have pale ale malt. If you make a log, you use pilsen malt basically. But they also like as black, a foundation. But you also have like black malt, right? But that's more for the darker stuff. There's not much flavor in them, right? No, no. But the, there's loads of flavor. Okay. But it doesn't have that much starch or or sugars. Okay. Okay. So so you use uh, roasted malts as accent malts okay. or, or flavoring malts. So even if you have the foundation of pilsen malt or pale ale malt, mm. you add accent malts as coloring and flavor. If you do a red ale, you might use a caramel malt mm. to get the beautiful red color. And in this beer, there's probably quite a lot of caramel malt in this. Yeah. yeah. Or, or Vienna malt or whatever in yeah, this Yeah, it has this kind of reddish It's a color. reddish color. Yeah. And it also has a bit of a caramelly note to it. Mm. Because it is dry, it is roasted over quite a long time. You caramelize some of the sugars inside the kernel or the barley, so you get like well these caramelly notes to to mm. the beer. If you want to do a black beer, you use black malts, which are roasted at maybe two hundred twenty degrees Celsius, but really fast. So you like burn away all the starch, you burn away all the enzymes. You you this is only made. Only used for flavoring and coloring, and it's really mm. potent. You you tried it two oh, weeks yeah. ago, yeah, and it's really intense. It's very intense. Like w- one small, I don't know how big it is. It's like it's not even maybe a, a fifth of your fingernail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's 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 very tasteful. It's yeah, uh, and, and you normally say like, beer, uh, like if you do a black beer, you need a black beer that is non see through. Between five and eight percent of that black malt will give that color mm. uh, to the beer. Yeah, it's like color it. Are <laughs> yeah, no, we not gonna go there? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking around. All right. So, mm-hmm. so you got your roasted malts. You, you've done all the things with the enzymes, and everything is going. And you stop the sprouting. What happens next? Well, after drying and roasting, you actually mill the malt, mm. and you you don't you ground grind it down to not meal. It's not going to be like... Not flour? Not flour. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to end up being a grist, basically. Mm. Like, yeah. Because if you put... Next step is putting water onto uh, the crushed malt. And you don't want a dough. No, you <laughs> we still want the the liquid. Oh, yeah. And if you put, put water onto flour, you end up with a dough. So you put water that is 65 degrees, 64 to 65 degrees Celsius. Why on that temperature? Because... That's when one of the enzymes in the malt actually activates. Okay. And it's called beta amulus. Beta amulus. Beta amulus. Beta amulus. Mm. All right. And this, uh, because starch is sugar molecules connected into big, really complex chains. And beer yeast does not like uh, complex sugars. Okay. And beta amulus cuts away from these chains, one, two, three, and four combined molecules. And this is what we call fermentable sugars. Sugars that are uh, the beer yeast actually loves to eat. Okay. And the more malt you have and the longer you ferme- uh, the mash at 65, because this is the mashing process, mm. uh, the longer you mash at 65 degrees Celsius or 64, the more of these fermentable sugars you will have. So the yeast has more to eat in the final end. So, so basically, the, the stronger the beer will get. Yeah, exactly. So the stronger the beer you want, the longer you do this. And the more malt you use. And the more malt you use. Yeah, yeah. But Okay, okay. 
All right. So then now you have this uh, this mushy kind of liquid uh, thing going on, and and what happens after that? Like it's well, you raise the temperature. You raise the temperature to seventy two degrees Celsius, because then you kill off the beta amulus, mm. or or make it stop working at least. And another enzyme called alpha amulus mm. starts cutting longer chains of sugar. Because, as I said, starch is complex. Mm. It's so complex, we don't even recognize it as sweet. Mm. Uh, and you want some sweetness left in your wort or in your uh, mash. Uh, because the mash is naturally quite sour. It was sour, but it's, it's around four and a half, five pH. And sugars that we uh, appreciate as sweet balance out sourness. Okay. Because you all have tasted Coca-Cola. Yeah. It doesn't taste sour, does it? Not really, no. It's 3.51, I think, on the pH scale. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely sour, but it's so much sugar in it, so you don't feel the sourness. It basically balances, it balances, balances each other that, out. Yeah. All right, all and, right, and yeah. the same way you use unfermentable sugars, the ones you get at 72 degrees by the alpha amulus, as balance out for the sourness in the wort or in the mash. Uh, and also some beers have residue sweetness, like, like this one. The, yeah, the Merton here, it's, yeah. it's kind of sweet. Yeah, it's more the sweet mm. and it's not sour. So <laughs> it, it's got uh, quite a lot of unfermentable sugars mm. left in it. Uh, and then when you have enough uh, unfermentable sugars uh, in your mash, you raise the temperature to 79 degrees Celsius-ish, and then you uh, kill off all the enzymes. And the mashing is basically done. All right, and what you have then is kind of a liquid porridge. Yeah, <laughs> it's it kind of, it, it's not sexy, is it? <laughs> you don't want to drink porridge. <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> so you sieve off the wort mm. or the malt-based liquid, mm. and you put that in a wort kettle. Is that what we call a brewer's breakfast? Kind of yes, because <laughs> that is what you get. Because if you start mashing at six, you might be done at eight. You go for a glass of this. Sweet, malty drink. I can confirm that it is delicious. <laughs> I used to when I when I was working extra in New Carnegie Brewery, and I got a glass of that. It's, you know, there's no alcohol in it, no, because it, this is way before the alcohol even. It's begins before to, the fermentation. Yeah, so it's basically liquid bread. Oh yeah, and it's warm, and it's sweet, and it's, it's sweet, and it's oh, it's delicious. And it's like eight a.m. in the morning. You've been up for four hours. It is delicious. <laughs> it's, it's better than a cup of coffee, by, by then. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then you boil the wort. Mm. And traditionally you boil it because you got rid of all bacteria. And that's when it becomes a paste rice beer, right? No. No? Oh, really? No, no, no. You boil the wort to get rid of bacteria first. Ah. Uh, the pasteurization is way later it's on way in beyond. the process. Okay, yeah? Okay, yeah. Uh, traditionally you boil it to get rid of bacteria because even back in the 1600s, as we talked about you uh, to you all about, mm. it was recommended that you drank beer, not water, because water would kill you, because the water <laughs> was so bad. <laughs> so, so it was recommended to drink beer instead of uh, instead water of because the water. <laughs> because cause they didn't know about bacteria, mm. but you didn't get as bad drinking beer as you did <laughs> by drinking the water, because they didn't know about the, like the boiling process taking away the the bacteria or the, oh. or the germs out of it. But also, this is where you spice your beer. Mm. And you no lo normally do that with? Hops. Yeah, yeah. true. <laughs> and there's about, say, 600 different kinds of hops that we use today. And there's more mm. coming up every day. There's a lot of it. Mm. And they're different wherever they grow and however you, you handle them. Yeah, well, th this is the only place. You, in the wine world, you talk about terroir. Yeah. Where where the grapes grow and and is it on a south hill or is it in like a uh, in what kind of earth it grows and stuff like that, but with hops hops is a weed. It yeah. is, it is it is it grows like you. It's really easy to grow hops. Yeah, just look at it because it grows about twenty centimeters a day. 
the closest relative to that is the cannabis sativa and yeah, the, the humulus the humulus lupulus as the, the hop is called yeah. in Latin is is they're very close as you said and they grow and they're widespread and they change their behavior wherever they are basically yeah. like towards the environment they are in so so and when you do this expect for example a hop is grown in England or in the US the same hop will be different in those two places. I think it was the Admiral Hops in the UK. Mm. They tried to grow it in Oregon in the US. And it became something totally different because mm. it it mutates mm. wherever it goes. And it's like, okay, I'm growing here now, so it's a weed. It's like it's trying to yeah. survive. How much water is it? How yeah, much sunlight is it? How much shadow? It's going to end yeah. up being something totally different. Yeah. Which is why it's kind of expensive to buy hops right it's 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 because it's very hard to control or yeah and it's really hard to control because if you let it grow wild it will mutate but it will also what you want is the hop cones the it's kind of the flower of the female plant of the bud hops and if you let it grow wild the male plants will actually push away the female plants oh so you will end up with male plants and no Hop cones, All right? And the hop cones are what, what you want for, for your hopping of the beer, because in the hop cones you have bitter compounds, and aromatic oils, yeah. and that's what you want for your beer. Yeah. So let's get back to the the process because we we are gonna do a hops episode <laughs> in yeah, the future yeah. <laughs> because trust me there there's a lot to learn about hops the the the, the information about it it's just endless of pages and oh, pages yeah. and pages so the bitter compounds the, the aromatic p- compounds because there's different steps of how we well, can well, use the hops in your beer well, if you if you throw in your hops in the beginning of of your mm. boil or of which the boil, we are right now yep yeah the bitter compounds will bleed out and build body to your beer mm. bitterness and body but the aromatic oils are volatile so they will actually boil away. Yeah. But if you add your hops later in the boil, or just by the end, the bitter compounds won't have time to bleed out because they are dependent on heat. Mm-hmm. And the aromatic oils will stay in the beer. So it's called bitter hopping and aroma hopping. And you can hop all the way through the boil, but the closer you get to the beginning, it's a bitter hopping. The closer you get to the end, it is an aroma hopping, all right. basically. Yeah. So you get more aromas at the end of the boil. You get more bitter compounds at the beginning of the boil. Which comes with more body as well, right? Oh, yeah. 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 And then you have another kind of hopping, which is called dry hopping. Yeah. And that is actually at the, re- uh, at the far end of the process. After fermentation, after lagering, you add shitload of hops. Yeah, this is basically yeah. Yeah, right at the end of the bottling. Yeah. Before the bottling, before the commonization, before the bottling, mm. you add shitloads of hops. And since there's no heat in that end of the process, you'll end up with fruitiness and aromas. Right. And that is why like modern IPAs smell crazy hoppy, but they have no bitterness to them. Mm. It's interesting. So we're in the beginning of the... the the bittering process now we're boiling our hops and it's different when it comes to a, a lager or pills or ipa or or stout right or yeah is well it, the is thing is right now after the after the boil you cool down the wood mm. and depending on what kind of beer you want to make you lower the temperature to different different temperatures so if you want to make a lager you lower your temperature to around eight degrees celsius because lager is a cold fermented product Mm. So it ferments at a uh, log yeast thrives at a lower temperature, but it takes a bit longer. But and it ferments really clean. Yeah. So we basically should say there's three different kinds of beer styles. If there's you don't, there's if, three if you don't different use, kinds of beer. If you don't use the subgenres, mm. it's it's under fermented, bottom fermented. There's top fermented. They're spontaneously fermented. Yeah, yeah. The bottom fermented are fermented at a low temperature. That ferments at between, I'd say, b- between 8 and 12 degrees Celsius. 12, yeah. Bottom fermented beers are lagers. Any kind of lager you drink, dark lager, doesn't matter. Yeah. Most Rauch beers are lagers as yeah. well. But There's only uh, one difference. That's a steam beer, but that's for another time. <laughs> uh, that's a warm fermented lager. We n- yeah, we're not going to go there. No. And then you have top fermented, which is ale. And ale yeah, equals ale, everything. Stouts. IPA, pale ale, stout, porter, and all of that stuff, right? Wheat beers. Wheat beers. Modern sour beers. Modern sour beers. We'll talk about the 
spontaneous fermented first, and then we go back to the modern sour beers. And then you have spontaneous fermented, which is a, a beer that basically lies in a pool, a cool pool, right? Well, you you don't add any yeast. No, you don't add it. It, it's, so it, you it bring lives in the nature around around the beer. This is mainly made in Pajotenland, in, in Belgium, around Brussels. Because over there they have a... A yeast that is actually existent in the environment yeah. called Brettanomyces. And this is a really aggressive yeast. It is, if you brew with anything but Brettanomyces, you don't want Brettanomyces near you. No. Because you can't clean it. That one's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. What, what did you talking about? It took a brewer like three years to clean out his brewery from Brettanomyces when yeah. he got infected. Brettanomyces is aggressive. Like super, super aggressive, but also slow. But slow, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you you put your your beer up in cool ships mm. in the attic, and and then you open your windows. It's a bit like a swimming pool, but cool down, <laughs> and um, quite shallow. Uh, shallow, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't and then dive in then it. the beer starts to ferment because of the the yeast in the environment and in the, these cool ships are made of wood, so so it's. Kind of like a sourdough process. Yeah, the the yeast is still existent in the wood, where the mm. where the wort is fermenting. But it's really slow, and it can take up to three years to ferment yeah. a sour beer. Which is why the price could seem a little bit high on these sort kind of sort of beers. But it it is not because this is it takes time to make it. You know, it, it's not it's not five to six weeks. We're talking about a year to three years. Yeah, <laughs> it is a long process. So so. What is it you used to say? Good beer isn't expensive. It just costs a little bit more money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, th- and that's, the, that's the perfect when you talk about spontaneous fermented beers because they take time to make. And th- this is handcrafted. This is a lot of thoughts. And it's often real fruits when you have to talk about creeks yeah. and you use cherries. It, it's not purees. It's just they put fresh fruits in it and it, the fruits ferments with it. So it's it's an entirely different process. But... We're also going to do an episode more thoroughly about spontaneous fermented beers. Oh, no, Lovely. about sours. About sours overall, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so back to the, the modern, or not modern, that's the wrong way to put it, I know, but yeah. the lacto-fermented beers Cause, now. Because people think this is a modern thing, and it's not. It's been around for ages and ages, and uh, probably the first beer ever made was probably lacto-fermented. But if you want to make... There's two ways of making a sour beer. If you want to make a cheap one... Use the lacto fermentation process. If you want to make an expensive one, let it ferment for ages and ages, because mm. time is money. Uh, yeah. If you want to lacto uh, sour a beer before you actually boil the wort, when you've sieved off your wort from your mashing process, you put it in your wort kettle, and you add lacto bacteria, and you leave it for a day or two, and this ends up being the same thing you do with kefir, uh, kimchi, kombucha. Mm. So so it starts to lacto-ferment with the lactobacteria. It becomes a sour wort, basically. Well, it it sours naturally. Yeah. And then you boil it to get rid of the bacteria. Mm. And then you do the same as you do with any other beer. You put it through to fermentation. And this is in... 99.9% 99.9% of the cases, it is a top fermented beer. Yeah. So you send it down to cooling, to um, and top fermented beers, you cool down to around 18 degrees Celsius because top fermented yeast is actually, it ferments best at around 18 to 24 degrees. All right, yeah. And then you send it over to your fermenters. If it's open fermenters or closed fermenters, it doesn't really matter. Put in the yeast, it starts to ferment, a lager takes a bit longer because everyone who's done, who's been baking, knows that a cold fermentation process, if you put your dough into the fridge, it will ferment slower. If you warm ferment, it will go faster. Bottom fermented beer, a lager, will take a bit longer. it take about two and a half weeks, depending on how strong it's going to be. A top fermented beer takes maybe a week and a half. Mm. After fermentation, you always log your beer because uh, during the fermentation process, you not only build alcohol and carbon dioxide, you build some other compounds that are not so nice. Yeah. Like sulfur, diacetyl. And diacetyl is also a problem with restaurants. Mm-hmm. 
if you go into a restaurant and order anything but a Czech style lager that tastes a bit like butter that is turning bad, give it back and order a bottle of beer because that means they haven't cleaned their lines. Yeah, so as you said, the flavor of that is like I used to say, some place tastes like butter popcorns. Oh yeah, 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 butter, butter with, with this like fake butter popcorn, yeah, fake, yeah. Butter, fake butter popcorns. Mm. They, that's what the flavor is, and when you have and that, that in your taps, diacetyl, diacetyl, yeah, and it's not nice. And it's in some beers there are supposed to be that, like chic. Pilsners Check and Pilsners yeah. and some hand pumped proper real ales. Yeah, they're supposed to be that, but in other beers, no. Then you can have some sweeter, buttery, f- fat flavors in beers. If you have like an oat lager or something, you can have the sweeter kind of flavor. Mm-hmm. That's not the acetyl, that's just the oat. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's sweeter. It's something you have to learn, I guess, to taste a little bit. Well, if you, you if just you have to come to Akrat and have a beer tasting with me. Oh, yay! <laughs> you should do that. We'll right talk now. about that. We'll talk Akrat. about that. Akrat.se, book it. Shout out to Akrat. We're sitting at Akrat. We haven't yes, said we it Yes, we are. We, we're sitting at our job, Akrat. Yeah. I finally got Rasmus to come here and work for Akrat. Yeah, I've been here since the 1st of November now. So it's very nice. It's really, really nice. I love it here. It is, honestly, I'm not shitting you guys, the best choice I've ever made to start yeah. working at Akrat. It is. It is. It's, it's a wonderful job. So okay, where were we? we we're, we're in the fermentation we're process. We're now. in the fermentation process. So we just boiled our bitter hops. We just, if we have, we have used some hops. We in cold the end it of down. That. We, 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 yeah, we yeah. moved it into fermenters. So fermenters. So after the fermentation, because fermentation is also an entirely different episode. Because you gotta know that these steps, you can nerd yourself down into these steps as deep as you want to oh, go. Yeah. For hours and hours and hours, so we, we we're we're scratching the surface right we now. We are nerdy, but not that nerdy right now. No, and when we are that nerdy, we're gonna have people being that nerdy with us. <laughs> 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 so now we we're, we have fermented our beers. So the the yeast has eaten the sugar and shut out alcohol and uh, and carbon and dioxide. Yeah, exactly. And diacetyl and, and, and sulfur DMS and yeah, and all that stuff. And what then happens now? You have to lager the beer. All right. So basically, store it. No, it's gonna still going to be in the fermenters, mm. but at a cooler temperature. And then the yeast actually starts reabsorbing what is shut out that we don't like, mm. which ma- means like diacetyl and sulfur. After lagering, a lagering, I normally say a lager that is 5% strong alcohol, ABV, takes five weeks to lager after fermentation. And yes, to be to be a podcast about beer, ABV means alcohol by volume. Yes. Yes. So after fermentation, you always, almost always send your beer to either separation or filtration. Uh, if you don't, don't. But <laughs> separation is kind of a centrifuge to get rid of yeast residue. The last shit on your clothes when you clean it. <laughs> 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 you want to make a little... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you don't filter it, don't don't um, separate it. Anyhow, it still goes into pressurization. Because the biggest culprit when it comes to the um, shelf life of a beer is oxygen content. And carbon dioxide pushes away oxygen. So you send it into a big vat or a, a, a big tank that is, uh, and you pressurize it with uh, carbon dioxide, and you have some. Well, it's basically like, like a big soda stream. You pressurize it. You got some really, really good and quite expensive equipment to uh, make sure you reach the right CO two content as every time, and then you turn it off. And it's commonized, it's done, and then you uh, package it, and the beer is done. Hmm. I know you have a few questions about different kinds of yeast. I know we're not going to do a yeast no, no, it, uh, it, it's, program it's, today, but no, but but but, we, but but you've opened one of my favorite breweries, yeah. a beer from one of my favorite breweries because here. Now we know how beer is made. So if you have the chance to go to a brewery and have a beer tasting and and look at the process. 
or getting explained to you while seeing all the equipment around you, please do that because if you like beer, it's it's a good experience to have. And it makes it easier to understand the process as well. Yeah, because thinking about it, being able to do it is very difficult. Being able to understand it is not that difficult. <laughs> If, if 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 you really go into it and look at the process, because you don't have to understand all the details and what this does to that, just to know what the steps are is 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 actually not super complicated, even though if if it is complicated. But this is one of the beers that surprised me, mm-hmm. because I haven't been the biggest fan of wheat beer, to be honest, and and, and especially not wheat beer, because you've had Hochgarten before, uh, and that's kind of. I don't even Board. like that. I, no, no, it's it's. There's different kinds of wheat beers, and and then you have the Belgian style wheat beers, and yeah. you explained this to me, and that why th- that's I think that's if if you want to st- understand what yeast has to do with the beer and the big importance of it is to try a uh, try a a German styled wheat beer and a Belgian styled wheat beer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not the wheat itself, right? No, it's the it's the yeast. It's the yeast. So and and this surprised me. So we're I poured up uh, Sankt Bernardus Wit. So it's a Belgian Wit beer, which is their kind of wheat beer, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I also I think it's but, uh, 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 by this. This <laughs> wheat beer is also spiced with um, um, orange peel and coriander seeds. And Belgian wheat wheat beer wheat beers are mostly spiced, while German style wheat beers are not. And before all the coriander haters are like, oh, this w- this soap. No, it's not. No, it's <laughs> coriander seed, not yeah. coriander leaves. No, so, so don't even try. You have to try it. <laughs> so let's have a share on this first. Cheers. And we are famous for our muscles here at Akrat. Oh, yeah. And this beer, with any kind of muscles, it's rock your socks ours. Gorgeous. Oh, but is it like two tons per year? Muscles? Is it's it? more than that. It's, uh, I think it's no. I'd, 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 I'd say it's it's more like. I think we last month we bought in eight hundred and fifty kilos, so it's more like twelve tons a year or, or eleven tons a year. Oh, that's insane amount of muscles. <laughs> All right, but but with this wheat beer, I, I really enjoy not the trash on the German style because there are some great German wheat beers as well. Oh yeah, of course. Definitely, definitely. But for my personal flavor, I'm not a big fan of this banana split kind of flavor that that comes with it. It has a bit of mashed like ripe bananas yeah. to the nose basically. Oh. This is a more yellow kind of banana, much more cleaner banana with some 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 of the the coriander spice. And the on the palate for me at least with, and flavors well, very personal. It's a bit personal. more estery. Yeah, I mean, more estery and and with the flavors with the spices coming in with it. I think this is a gorgeous beer. And here you can really feel how the yeast actually rules it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if you mean. And, the, and the thing is, like, uh, lots of people go like, well, I don't like wheat beer, but I like Hochgarten. And then, mm. of course, Hochgarten is the most available wheat beer out there. But this is, a t- it's it's like saying that Holba, like a macro-brewed beer, is the same as a Helsinki Pilsner or, or a really good m- micro-produced un- unfiltered, unpasteurized lager, because mm. this is so much more... You, you can feel it's craft beer. Yeah, exactly. And craft beer isn't... I think that term has become a little bit... For people who don't drink beer that often, it has become this kind of nerdy thing like craft beer it's expensive it's fancy no so it's, it's not expensive it's not it's it costs more money <laughs> but good beer it's not expensive <laughs> it just costs a little <laughs> bit more money no it's it's the other way around I, i'd say it's it's it you pay for the handcraft like if you're interested in jewelry you don't go to h&m and buy jewelry right like you go to a handcrafted jewelry maker and buy your jewelry that you feel like is personalized for you and it's all of this stuff, and I think this is, it is the same with beer. When you find something you really like, you will actually go to the same brewery and buy it again and again and again. This is what we talked a bit about this before. You mm. talked about pasteurization. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is in my book. Uh, I'm not saying this as a total fact for the world, but in my book, the difference between a macro beer and a craft beer. 
is pasteurization. Mm. Pasteurization is something you do after uh, maturation, and in that case, almost 98% of the times, it's heavily micro-filtered, mm. and then you pasteurize it to kill off all living components in the beer. Yeah. A craft beer is not. It's still alive. It will give it a shorter shelf life, but yeah. it will be a living product. And I'd rather drink that from a craft brewery than I'd drink a macro beer. Definitely. I agree with you 100%. And you can find a lot of fun stuff out there in this day and age we live in now. There's so many breweries out there. There are so many good breweries. There are people that, that are beginning and trying. And it's Support them. Please do. Yeah. But I have to say this as well. Mm. If you love macaroon lagers, mm. drink macaroon lagers. Because yeah. there's say. only one person who has the right answer when it comes to flavor, and that is you. Yeah. Beer is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be about joy. But don't stop trying new stuff. Exactly. Don't don't ever stop trying to be open-minded. Open-minded towards everything you drink. You don't have to like it. And beer is not that expensive. No. Even though even... Even if you go to your local retailer or if you in Sweden you have to go to the local monopoly, mm. even an, ex- an expensive beer is way more cheap than a shit wine. Yeah. And and, and try new stuff. And the thing we have in, 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 in Sweden with our monopoly is that we have our temporary sortiment, which is a shelf in in the monopoly where you can where they take in you know, temporary stuff that is just available for right now and is often macro, m- micro beers. No, craft. Oh, sorry. I don't, I don't want to say micro anymore. <laughs> and on the temporary shelf, there's often the, the craft beers and, and handcrafted types of beers. So, in, I mean, they range between 20 and 120 and up there, mm-hmm. like grams per, per bottle, but try it. it it's, it's a lot of fun. And if you don't like it, if you buy a beer for 30 kroners, if you don't like it, pour it out. Or hold your nose and drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a big world when it comes to beer. And it, it's last... And it's grown. Yeah, in, in the last... I mean, for, for me, who's, who's pretty young still, I mean, in the last 10 years, for me, it's grown insanely. So I can imagine how it has been for you who's been in the business for a longer time than I have. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, just make sure that beer is fun. Because it should never be hard and, and like, never be snobby. Be nerdy. Never. A nerd is someone who, who wants to show the world that they love. A snob is someone who wants to show you that they know. We don't know shit. We just like to talk oh, yeah, about beer. <laughs> well, the more we drink beer, the more we try, yeah. the more we learn that there's so much more to learn. All of our listeners is always welcome to Akira to talk shit about beer and just try new stuff and, and be open-minded towards everything. And that's and, what and, we love. And the thing is, our boss right now is scheduling us against each other. So if I'm not here, he's here. Yeah. If... You're not here, I'm here. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> one of us would basically always be here. It might be one day a week, we're not, but like it's it's mostly one of us is here. When we we were talking to you, you, the listener, which we we do rarely, I think. Yeah. Please do write to us. What do you want us to talk about? Yeah. Is there something you want to know? Is there something you want to, to learn? I don't know. It's because we try to by our own hands, create episodes which we think you will enjoy. And we really hope you enjoyed the last episode which you will, because we really did. And we have some cool ideas, but but it would be cool to hear from you guys what you want to hear. Yeah. And what you want to talk True. about. Uh, should we open that bottle as well and then okay, uh, we finish up with it? All right, then. Mm. So, um, cheers. Cheers. See, see. And you guys, whatever you do, Drink Drink better better beer. beer.